Hi you guys, how's everyone doing out there? I'm gonna give it a few minutes and let people start to jump on. Um, what we are doing today, if we haven't met yet, my name is Julie, it's quarantine kitchen time. Um, hello, people are starting to come on now. Hi, what's going on? I'm gonna show you guys how to make five minute Instant Pot mac and cheese today. And what I also thought I would do while the mac and cheese is cooking is kind of go over a little bit of what Instant Pots are, how they work, whether you might wanna add one to your cooking game or not. Hi guys, everyone give me a thumbs up if you have an Instant Pot and you're into it. And let me think of another good emoji you can give me. Give me a heart if you're psyched to learn more about them. Just give me a thumbs up if you guys already have an Instant Pot and you're into it. And give me a heart if you wanna learn more about them. For everyone who's new here, I'm Julie Hardigan. It's at Cooking W Julie. And I actually have a really exciting announcement too. This week, I partnered with Instant Pot and I'm giving away two free Instant Pot Duo Novas. They're like, I don't know, over $100 each. They are awesome, you guys. Um, Instant Pot is just a brand of pressure cooker, by the way, but I'm gonna go over all of that. So to get started, I've got my baby right here in front of me, my Instant Pot. To make this five minute mac and cheese, we're gonna start out with, oh, I see some thumbs up. Some people have Instant Pots and love them. For people that are curious, I'm gonna go over what they do, how they work, what the deal is, is it even worth it? I live in an apartment in Hoboken, so I don't have a lot of space. So for me, cooking gear better earn its keep. <laughs> like it's gotta justify the storage space. And I'm not gonna lie, they're not small. So let's get started. I'm gonna just like get it going because it's gonna take a little time to come up to pressure and start cooking our macaroni. And I'll show you how easy it is to make this five minute mac and cheese. So we're gonna start with, by the way, I'll give pantry swaps too for everybody out there that's like cooking from scraps at this point. You need a pound of any small macaroni. I've got classic little elbows here. Add those. Then we need four cups of chicken broth, veggie broth. If you have to, you can use water, but I'm using chicken broth just because it adds a little boost of flavor. And it's gonna cook right in here. You're not gonna need to drain anything, which is cool. So this is good for you guys to know, anyone who does cook with an Instant Pot um, or a pressure cooker, you can do a pound of macaroni to four cups of broth or liquid, and it's gonna cook up not like soupy. I'll show you how we finish it, and it turns into like a cheesy casserole. So that's just like a good proportion for you to keep in mind. So we started with four, hi everyone who's joining, it's Julie. We're doing five minute Instant Pot mac and cheese, and I'm also gonna go over how these things work, whether they're worth adding to your kitchen, um, what the deal is with Instant Pot. So, we started with a quart of chicken broth and a pound of small macaroni. Now we're gonna add two tablespoons of butter. It's gonna cook right in and help the macaroni not stick together. And then we're gonna add some seasonings. And these are kind of classic, I love these in mac and cheese. This recipe is on my website, by the way, guys. It's cookingwjulie.com and just go search Instant Pot and a whole bunch of Instant Pot recipes will come up. This is the five minute mac and cheese. We're gonna add a teaspoon of either onion powder or garlic powder. I like onion powder, it just gives things, if you guys were following, I did the um, Greek yogurt caramelized onion dip. It gives things that like classic retro vibe. I don't know, there's something about onion powder that uh, is nostalgic for me. I grew up on it or something. <laughs> then I'm gonna add a, oops, I forgot my salt. Teaspoon of salt to season the pasta. And we're gonna add some hot sauce. You guys like a little kick? to your mac and cheese? I do. You can leave this out if you don't want it. You could do cayenne pepper, a pinch. You could save it till the end. If you're cooking for kids, you can leave it out. Just adding a little bit. And this one is a trick. Did you guys know there's usually dry mustard or mustard in mac and cheese? It actually kind of combines with the cheese and gives it this really rich, awesome vibe. It's like this onion mustard cheese combo that makes mac and cheese taste so good. I am out of dry mustard, so I'm pantry cooking myself today. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of regular mustard. Okay. That is it. Now I'm gonna stir to combine a little bit and I'll show you how this baby works. So by the way, when you're looking at Instant Pot recipes, there's a common thing that we all do when we write them and I'll explain why. It cooks in five minutes, but it's gonna take a little bit longer than that and I'll explain what's going on with this. So I've combined everything in here. Now I'm gonna put the lid on. You hear it sings? These are not as scary as the one your mom might have used to cook with. My mom used to like shove me out of the kitchen when she busted out her pressure cooker. These guys are super safe to use and they're really easy now. So I put the lid on. I'm going to spin it to lock it. Do you guys hear that? Some people hate that noise. It's very reassuring to me because I know the lid is locked. 
Now what you do on the top, you set it to ceiling, and I'm gonna give you a close up look on another lid I have, because yes, I freakishly own two different models of pressure cooker or instant pot. So we set the top to ceiling, and now all the control panels are a little bit different, but I'll go over in general how they work. It's really not hard at all. You just wanna use the manual pressure cooking function, and this guy cooks for five minutes at high pressure. So for this one, and again, they're all slightly different, I press, where am I now? I press pressure level, oop, pressure cook, <laughs> and then the time is coming up. I'll show you guys on here. It's just hard for me to work the buttons. Oops, without you guys being able to see. My mustard lid just went flying. I'll show you guys. Okay, so I set it to pressure, and now I'm going to do pressure level. Where am I here? You guys are cracking up. You're like, Julie, this doesn't look easy at all. So it's pressure eight minutes. I want high pressure, so I'm gonna press pressure level to switch it to high. There's like a toggle feature that goes back and forth between high and low, so you can figure out which one. That's all they have. Oh, thanks for the heart. They go from high and low, these guys. And then the time, see, I'm, it's going too fast for me. Hold on, you guys, I'm gonna do it again. Pressure cook, I'm gonna set it to pressure level high, and then you adjust the time. It automatically defaults to eight minutes, and I'm setting this guy to five. All right, hold on. I'm gonna spin it around slowly without knocking things off my little demo island here. It feels like a very Monday today. Uh, you're not gonna be able to really, really see it. It's gonna blink a little bit. But you guys see how it says on right now? Every model of pressure cooker or instant pot does it a little bit differently. But what's happening right now, I'm gonna be a geek for a second. For those of you who've been following me, you might remember I'm an engineer turned chef, so I'll nerd out on you sometimes. So the reason why instant pots cook so much quicker than a normal pot on the stove. What you're doing here is actually sealing the lid in and you're gathering pressure as the temperature increases inside the pot and things that are cooked under pressure are gonna cook a lot faster to like sum it all up. So what's happening right now with this five minute mac and cheese, we combined our chicken broth or you could use veggie broth, you could use water, our pound of macaroni, our butter and some seasonings and now it's coming up to pressure. So this guy says on, meaning it's starting to gather pressure and come up to pressure. Other models of Instant Pot, I have another one by Ninja, the foodie. Um, it works great. Honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little lowdown on the differences between them, but um, some of them have a little timer guy that goes around like that. But basically what you need to know is it's locked, it's building pressure, and we just kind of have to hang out. But the cooking doesn't start until you see the timer come on. It'll click, and we'll actually hear like an audible click when the pressure builds up and then the pasta starts to cook. So hey, for everybody that's joining me right now, it's Julie, hello, at Cooking W Julie, and I'm showing everyone how to make five minute Instant Pot mac and cheese, but also I'm gonna go over like what the heck these things are, how they work, whether you might wanna get one or not. I was very skeptical. Um, I live here in Hoboken in a little apartment. I don't have a lot of room, and honestly, once I started playing with them, I was like, hey, these really actually do speed things up. They work really well. I think you guys would dig them. Hi guys, I see people saying hi. So everyone who knew who's joined, who already has an Instant Pot? I'm gonna be looking, give me a quick thumbs up. Cause I'm kind of curious, how many people just want Instant Pot tips and how many people, give me a heart if you don't have one, but you wanna learn how they work. So everyone who's watching, I see some highs, I see a thumbs up. Thumbs up, cool. Thumbs up. I have something exciting too. I see a bunch of thumbs up. Cool, cool. All right, a lot of you guys have them. For anyone, oh, I see some hearts floating up too. Very cool. So for those of you who don't have one, and even for those of you who do, I'm just gonna go over super speedy what they do. I did a segment on CBS New York about Instant Pot cooking, and also for my friends at Good Morning Connecticut, I've done a few segments using the Instant Pot. So the deal is, this guy works as both a pressure cooker, like I was saying, way easier to use and safer to use and less complicated to use maybe than the ones that our moms had where the top would wobble and you'd see the steam coming out and you weren't sure what was going on and she would shush you out of the kitchen. With the newer models, Instant Pot was kind of the first brand I think that really kind of hit the market hard and took over things and created their own brand name for themselves. But basically, Instant Pots are pressure cookers, just to straighten that up. And lots of other manufacturers make them. Like I said, Ninja has one called The Foodie. I happen to own that one also. I think Breville makes one, uh, Zavor makes one. There are lots of different brands. But the deal is they don't just pressure cook. What's cool about them, what I really appreciate, honestly, the insert 
the little metal pot that goes in and out of it is really easy to clean and you can even saute in the bottom. So if you want, you can just use this guy to like saute some veggies or make a stir fry. It's great for college cooking or if you don't feel like lighting the stove, if you run out of space on the stove, or you can also use it as a slow cooker. And what's really cool about using your Instant Pot as a slow cooker, oh, I'm so sorry, need a session about cleaning it properly. I have one. So sorry, I need glasses, you guys. I like that it's a one pot situation. Oh my God, for sure. So the thing that's also great about them, like I was saying, if you're gonna do something in the slow cooker, I have this really old slow cooker where it's like a ceramic insert, it's really heavy, things seem to stick to it and you can't brown in it. So you know how so many great soups and stews and different recipes that need to be in a slow cooker or a pressure cooker, you have to brown the meat first? It's like such a hassle for me anyway to have to do it on the stovetop first, transfer it to another pot, it's like double cleanup. So what's really cool about these guys, hey everyone joining, it's Julie. I'm making five minute Instant Pot mac and cheese and oh, hi Annette, and I'm kind of going over the pros and cons of pressure cooking and Instant Pots and what they are. Cool, so everyone let me know too. Give me a thumbs up if you have an Instant Pot. I'm trying to tailor what I'm talking about too, where you guys are at. If you don't have one and you're curious or about pressure cooking, throw me a heart and then I'll know I'm like talking to you guys too. So. We got this guy started, it's still coming up to pressure. You can see it says on. All of a sudden it's gonna make like a nice click noise and it's gonna turn over into the actual cook time. So one thing that's a little complicated or not complicated, it's a little deceptive, maybe a little confusing. Most recipes will say, you know, cook for five minutes at high pressure, cook for 30 minutes at low pressure, whatever it is. But it takes a little bit of time for the liquid in the pot to come to pressure and that's not included in some recipes. The ones I've written I usually say it takes about 10 minutes to come to pressure, it takes about 5 minutes to come to pressure. So what I have going on in here right now is a pound of macaroni, a quart of chicken broth, some mustard, some onion powder, or some hot sauce, salt, and butter. And it's going to cook just like that. We're not going to need to drain it. And then I'll show you guys how to finish the mac and cheese. This recipe, by the way, for everyone just joining, it's on my website, cookingwjulie.com. And just search Instant Pot. And for everyone out there who does have an Instant Pot, if you're watching on your phone and your laptop is nearby, you can just jump on and search. I've got like a ton of other really good Instant Pot recipes. There's a chili. I've got uh, really great chocolate lava cakes that are such a fun treat. They take like 10 minutes to make. So while this guy is coming up to pressure, we were talking about how great it is for one pot cooking and they're so easy to clean. It's got like a stainless steel insert and I find things don't stick to it as much either. Um, sometimes you have to like put a little baking soda in the bottom to get it cleaned out, but they're really easy to use that way. And then most of them come with all of these other functions too. So I did a project last summer and you can also find this. If anyone's looking to buy one, um, it's for it was Tom's Guide. So if you guys search Tom's Guide Instant Pot Review, you'll see an article come up that I did for them where the engineer turned chef in me, my friend Kevin and I worked on it together. We sat down and we did like six Instant Pots lined up side by side and we tested every single model that they have to show like which one's better for rice, which one's better for slow cooking, which one's better for pressure cooking, which one's the easiest to use, the hardest to use. So if you have any friends that are looking to buy one, Okay, here's another tip for you guys now. You can't see this probably or hear this, but I've got the nozzle in the sealed position, but there's actually a little steam coming out of the top. And I just want to reassure you and let you know, when I first started using these, I was like, hold up, is this thing gonna explode? <laughs> is this sealed right? It's totally fine. What's happening is a little tiny bit of steam is escaping right before the lid's gonna seal. So you can see it says on, it's on high pressure for five minutes, it's coming to pressure, and then it's gonna start to cook. So. Some things that trip people up, including myself when I first started cooking in Instant Pots, I'm gonna show you on this other lid that I have. Hold on one sec. Oop, hold up. It just like clicked a little bit. You'll see, all of a sudden this time is gonna switch from on, and it's gonna start counting down from the five minutes. And then we'll know that the pasta is actually cooking, it's at pressure. So what happens with these guys, the lid is actually the hardest part. So this is a different lid for a different Instant Pot. It's for the Ninja Foodie. Each lid has, let me show you, like a ceiling ring like this. It comes out completely, it's flexible. Um, you can throw it in the dishwasher, which is awesome. They do retain a little bit of smell from cooking. Um, so what you can do about that is just soak these in a little bit of baking soda, or you can uh, 
soak it in some vinegar I've heard people do. Honestly, I found just putting it through the dishwasher helps and none of the smell transfers to the food either. Hey everyone, everyone joining, it's Julie, what's up? We're doing Quarantine Kitchen and today's episode is all about Instant Pots and whether you want one or don't want one. I'm making five minute Instant Pot Mac and Cheese and it's cooking in here right now. I just got it started. So here's the thing that's a little bit weird. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You have to make sure that this ring is completely shoved in all the way in and every model is a little bit different you'll get used to yours if it's not completely in and even you won't get that little doo -doo 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 when it's locking and unlocking and honestly i know this sounds really dumb it took me a little bit of fighting to get used to that and now i realize finally i'm like okay if you're having a hard time getting the lid on you probably didn't shove the ring back all the way in so that's tip number one when you're cooking with these the other one is there we go did you guys hear that beep and i know the display might look a little weird but basically that time while I was going blah, 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 the pressure was building in here. Now the cooking is actually starting. So let's say we were doing something in here like I have a really great pulled pork recipe on my website in the Instant Pot. It might take like 10 to 15 minutes to come to pressure if there's a lot of liquid, a lot of food in there. Then the timing for the recipe starts after that. So I just wanna let you guys know that, oops. And I'll also let you know what quick release versus slow release means. So it seems like a lot of you have Instant Pots, so you're probably kind of used to that, but I'll also tell you from a recipe writing perspective why you want to quick release some and why you want to slow release others. Okay, so I just went over the lid a little bit. The other thing, and this is a little weird, this is me shouting out to everyone who makes these. I guess they come off so you can clean them. This is like the little nozzle that lets the steam out at the end and that helps it seal in. But some of them, it like kind of falls off, which is not, not great. Um, here's the thing you'll see on your lid you probably can't really read that one side will say this one it says seal here and vent here so when you're setting your timing you just have to turn it towards the seal so the pressure will seal then you turn it to vent at the end of the cook time and again I'll show you how to do that safely totally safe and easy to use but those are my tips when it comes to the lid let's see I wrote a whole bunch down for you guys Another tip, you know I was talking about how it takes some time to come up to pressure and you're waiting for the cooking to actually start. If you want to speed things up a little bit, and I actually cheated a little tonight and did that, you can heat up the liquid you're going to put in the pot and it's going to come to pressure quicker. Because what's happening in here when it's sealed, the temperature inside the machine is heating up and the liquid is heating up and that's what's forming that pressure seal to let it cook a lot quicker. So a way to cheat the system, you can like heat up your broth or whatever, as I did in the microwave right before I jumped on here, and that'll help it come to pressure quicker. So that's a little tip for you guys. Hi guys. I have an exciting announcement too. I think I said this in the beginning, but I am actually doing a giveaway this week of two Instant Pots. So if anybody wants a new one or knows a friend that wants one, the post went up this afternoon on Instagram. It's at cookingwjulie, so you guys can check it out. It's your usual, follow me, follow them tag a friend but they really are worth it they really make things a lot faster all right let me see my other tips you guys start with the hot broth time to pressure we love cooking in one pot which is amazing but they also do rice cooking which is super cool so if people like rice cooking they do slow cooking here's something I found though when I tested all the models side by side uh, they don't work as reliably as your slow cooker. So something for you to be thinking about if you're trying to decide if you want to replace your slow cooker with an Instant Pot or with a pressure cooker that does slow cooking. If you use your slow cooker a lot, you might have to adapt your recipes. What I found was they took a little bit longer, weirdly. Um, the slow cook function just didn't seem to adapt straight away to a regular recipe. It worked, but it was the kind of thing where instead of it taking eight hours, it might take 10 or 12. But to be honest, with slow cooking, you're usually just doing it overnight or you're setting it. And remember when we used to go to work? When we <laughs> remember when we would set our pressure cooker and go out? But you know what I mean, you guys. So Instant Pots do pressure cooking, which speeds things up. They're fantastic for like pot roast and pulled pork and things like that. Um, but they can also do slow cooking, which is cool. You can saute in them, you can make rice. Some models you can make yogurt. Honestly, I haven't tried that yet. Anybody out there try making yogurt? Give me a thumbs up if you've made yogurt. I've heard it's like life-changing. My friend Steve does it like once a week for his boys, he's obsessed. Anybody make yogurt in their Instant Pot yet? No, I don't see any thumbs up. Everyone's like, nope, I haven't tried that. Here's a really fun thing you can do in them too that I really love to do. So they all come with a little insert like this that goes right in the pot. 
You can steam like chicken breasts or veggies or fish or whatever. You can use it like a little steamer insert. Just put your, you know, your broth or whatever with some aromatics like lemon or lime or some spices or onion or garlic in the bottom and steam. But a fun way to do it too, or a different way to use these, you can actually make dessert in your Instant Pot. So you guys really need to try this recipe. Anyone who has an Instant Pot out there, go to my website, cookingwjulie.com and search chocolate lava cake. Now I usually write really healthy WW recipes and most of my stuff is very light and healthy, but if you want a decadent, really rich, really easy, fast treat, and it makes four, so if you're quarantine kitchen at home alone, you could have it and just make two and it'll come out fine, throw one in the freezer for next week. They're so easy to make and they're those little molten cakes where you cut into them and the chocolate oozes out. They're so fast and I do them in the Instant Pot. There's also a way to do them in the oven if you don't feel like digging yours out. But what's cool with this little insert you can actually, oh, check it. You guys, our macaroni's done. Let me finish telling you about the lava cakes and then I'll show you how to release the steam from this guy. All right, I hear you, dude. Ah, oh, so insistent. <laughs> so what you do, you actually make the batter for the lava cakes and then you put little ramekins on this guy here and insert it into your pot. And for the fourth one, this was the little trick. I think in the recipe I covered them with foil. The fourth one would just sit on top. This is asking a lot of a Monday. Let's see how I do if I don't drop this. Ta-da! So you actually bake in the ramekins in the Instant Pot. I think it takes like five minutes to cook these and they come out perfect every time. So easy to clean up. You don't have to heat up your kitchen um, and they're really delicate and yummy. Okay, so our macaroni is done cooking for our mac and cheese. So now it's time to quick release versus slow release. And I'll let you know what the heck the difference is between that and that. Hi guys, for everyone who's just joining, it's Julie. I'm making five minute Instant Pot mac and cheese. I'm doing an Instant Pot giveaway this week on at Cooking W Julie. The post just went up and I'm gonna show you guys how to finish this mac and cheese right now. And then if anyone has any questions too, think about them, you can ask and I'll, I'll like lean in so I can read them and I'll answer them at the end. Okay, so it's been set in the ceiling position we heard the beep go off, so the five minutes is up. So quick release is what you would do right now with a pasta, with a rice, with something where you, exactly as it says, you wanna stop the cooking right now. It's kinda of like when your pasta timer goes off, you don't want it to go over too much longer because what happens with all these Instant Pots, when the time is up, they revert to like a keep warm mode, which is super helpful if you're making pulled pork or chili or ribs or something like that. But when you're making pasta or rice, I'm not worried about an extra minute or two right now, but if I let this go for an extra half an hour and warm, it would come out all mushy and gummy and gross. So what we wanna do is quick release this steam, and here's how you do it safely. It's gonna be pretty dramatic, I might jump. <laughs> Use a towel and a wooden spoon. Keep it, I like to pull it out from under the countertop because the steam is gonna come out and we don't want it to get too damp under there, and you certainly don't want your face under over there. Um, if you were gonna slow release it, that's for like a pulled pork or a pot roast. Hey everyone joining, it's Julie, what's up? We're doing five minute Instant Pot mac and cheese and I kinda also just went over all the pros and cons of Instant Pot versus slow cooker, why you might wanna get one. I post all these episodes afterwards so you guys can check it out too. So I'm gonna show you how to do a quick release now. Wooden spoon, dish towel, it's really not that hard. <laughs> I'll be back in a sec. I need some like music to play for you guys right now. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. I was joking in one of these episodes, I was doing something with cucumber and it splashed me and I was like, oh, it's like spa day, but my face is not going near the hot steam right now. All right. So this was the part that your mom probably kicked you out of the kitchen for when she was using her pressure cooker back in the day. But I guess the thing with those is when you were releasing the pressure, if the lid wasn't sealed on those like 30 year old models, the lid would pop off. These guys are locked. It's not gonna come off, I promise. I've tested so many of these models. I've used it for all these different recipes. Once it goes doo 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 and it's locked in like that, that lid is not going anywhere. And you don't have to worry, seriously. You'll know if it's not coming up to pressure because you'll see it'll stay on for like so long and it won't start timing. So then you just check and you switch it back to seal. So that, you guys, was a quick release. 
We're just gonna let it kind of finish. So again, when I write recipes, I quick release rice, I quick release baked goods like a cake. Anything, think, when you're thinking about it, if you're creating your own recipes or playing with your recipes in an Instant Pot, if you wanna stop the cooking right away, you do quick release. If it's the kind of thing that's like a braise, like a yummy melted like Korean short ribs or pot roast, I'm trying to make you guys hungry, or pulled pork, I have recipes for all those on my site by the way, then you want a slow release because the temperature is just gonna drop slowly and it kind of gives you that yummy buttery result. All right, let's finish our mac and cheese, you guys. And I hope you're thinking of questions because I'd love to try to help you if you've been like fighting with your pressure cooker or your Instant Pot. So it's still gonna be hot in here, so we wanna be careful when we take this guy off. Ta-da! All right, move this over here. So, uh, I'll have to tip this. I'll figure out how to tip it so you guys can see. Oh, here's another thing that trips people up, and I'm gonna do it right now and show you. Some of these models have a separate power cord. I know that sounds really basic, you guys, but it happened to me, it might happen to you, I don't want it to happen to you. Always double check that it's plugged all the way in. It's pretty easy for it to come ajar, and then obviously you'll be like, why isn't my Instant Pot working? I know, sounds silly. Like I said, I admit it, it's happened to me. So check it out. Our pound of pasta has totally absorbed all of that chicken broth. I added chicken broth, mustard, onion powder, butter, I'm gonna give it a stir with my wooden spoon. I use a towel because this insert right here is hot because it's been, what's been cooking, you know, inside, obviously it's really hot. Sorry, that came out really funny. Um, it's a lot lighter though than your slow cooker insert if you have one of those clay stoneware ones. So these come out, they can go in the dishwasher, right into the sink, they clean really easily. So to finish our mac and cheese, I'm basically just stirring this to kind of break the pasta up distribute the butter all within. Next, we just add the most basic ingredients you probably have, and if you don't, I'm gonna give you some swap ideas. We just dump it in and stir it. There's nothing else to do. Okay, we're adding in half a cup of whole milk. You could use skim, you could use, uh, if you needed to use almond milk, if you, well, no, you wouldn't make mac and cheese. I'm not sure, I think it would work with vegan cheese, but. Any milk you want would work in here. You could use canned evaporated milk if that's all you had. You could probably even just use powdered milk reconstituted in water to be a half a cup. This is just to kind of help make the yummy cheese sauce. Then we're adding in two and a half cups of shredded cheddar. Any cheese you have will work. I actually made this once with like scraps of cheese. It was, well, I don't know. I, I guess you could call it like eight cheese macaroni and cheese. I might've had Gruyere and cheddar and Swiss. I had all these little like ends of cheese in my fridge. I have a good friend, by the way, I hope she's watching. We live together right out of college. Hi, Kathy, if you're watching. She used to buy all the cheese ends at the supermarket, so we have a big joke about cooking with cheese ends. Then, this is just to give it a little edge. I have a quarter of a cup of parm, and this gives it such great creaminess, a quarter of a cup of cream cheese. If you don't have parm, don't worry about it. You could add pecorino, uh, you could add what other sharp cheese could you add? I hope you have parm, it's such a staple for me. If you don't have it, seriously skip it, just add a little extra cheddar. If you don't have the cream cheese, you could use light cream cheese. I wouldn't recommend fat-free. I don't like fat-free cheese and cream cheese. I'm fine with the light. The 2% would totally work. Oh, and if you wanted to use gluten-free pasta, the one I like the best, have you guys tried Bonza chickpea pasta? It tastes the most like regular pasta and it doesn't get mushy when you cook it. I really like it. But what I would do is cook it for less time in the Instant Pot, maybe like four minutes instead of five. All right, so we're just stirring this in. I'll show you guys. If you weren't hungry before, when I was waxing poetic about pulled pork and short ribs and all those things, you guys are gonna be like, what? You guys like mac and cheese? Probably. You're like, yeah, Julie, we turned up for this. We love mac and cheese. Hold on. Give you guys a little peek. And let's see if I can show you. Sorry, this pot's a little hot. I have asbestos hands, but they're not that. You know what, here, where's my other dish towel? Mm. Oh, it's not that bad anymore. See what I do for you? I love you guys. Ta-da! Let's see if I can stir that. Yummy, rich, delicious. Oh my gosh, my daughter's freak for this. Mac and cheese, how easy was that? Who's gonna try this? Give me a thumbs up if you guys are gonna make mac and cheese in your Instant Pot. Now, ideas for you. 
you know, to make this a little healthier, or if you're trying to make a whole meal, if you want to do like kind of that cheesy macaroni casserole sort of a deal, you could easily add some broccoli to this. You could put some chopped broccoli in. What I would do, actually, what I would do when I release the steam, yay, I see some thumbs up. I want you guys to make mac and cheese. We did our five minute mac and cheese. I would actually add the broccoli right after I release the steam, put it in and close the lid for a second so it kind of goes in with the hot pasta and the hot broth and then I would finish it with the rest of the cheese. Or you could just stir in some cooked broccoli. You could add mushrooms, you could add peas, you could add diced ham. Who had ham yesterday for Easter? I made ham. Um, you could add bacon, you could add shredded chicken. So again, you guys, I think the proportion that you should remember if you like using your Instant Pot is pound of small macaroni, four cups of broth of any kind, and five minutes at high pressure. And then seriously, you can take it wherever you want. You saw what the results look like. I'd put a little butter in when you cook it just to keep it from sticking together or olive oil would work too. But then you could honestly, you could put, um, this would be a cool way to lighten it up. Instead of using all cheese, you could add some pureed cauliflower, which would be really cool. People do that a lot. They make like these cool cheese sauces with cauliflower. So maybe you could go with like one cup of cheese or one and a half cups of cheese and one cup of pureed cauliflower or pureed butternut squash. That would be yummy too. You just stir it in. So here's the one downfall about Instant Pots and slow cookers, to be honest. Everything comes out of them wet, right? It's a wet cooking environment. You have it sealed, there's all this steam going on. So the Ninja Foodie does come with a separate lid. I don't wanna dig it out. If you saw my pantry right there, you'd be like, what is that, Julie? It's basically another lid, it's kind of heavy. It's attached to it and it has a, a broiler function in it. But what's cool about that, if you wanted to top this with some breadcrumbs and get it crispy, you could put that on and broil it right there. Actually, I think that uh, Instant Pot has one now too that you could get that's separate, that's like a broiler lid, so that way you can get things crispy. But what you could easily do is just put some toasted buttered breadcrumbs on top if you wanted, or put it into a casserole dish with some breadcrumbs and pop it under the broiler for a minute to serve it. You could do something like that. So some tips I have for you. Here's the other thing I've noticed. And this is for slow cookers or instant pots, you guys. Things come out, they taste a little weak. Do you guys ever find that? Especially your slow cooker. You follow the recipe, you finish it, you're like, I guess I did it right. It's not as like yummy and flavorful as I really wanted it to be. So what I find happens, I've written a lot of slow cooker recipes. The spices and the flavors just kind of dilute while they're cooking in there. And sometimes the ingredients that you are slow cooking or that you're pressure cooking are releasing water or juices or moisture of their own. So what you should do, there's a couple of things. The first one, if you're cooking meat in an instant pot, let's say you were doing like short ribs or pot roast or whatever, and your gravy or your juice came out too watery, you just take the meat out. I would use tongs, put them in something to keep warm. And the thing that's cool about Instant Pots, especially, and slow cookers, you could do this too, but this guy for sure, because you can saute in it, you could switch to the saute function and rock the heat up to high and boil that liquid down and reduce it, de chef -y term, but I think you guys get what I mean. If you're reducing it, if you're cooking it and boiling it, some of the water is gonna evaporate and you'll get like a nice thick gravy. So I do that a lot when I make like ribs or short ribs or pulled pork or pulled chicken, but you don't want your meat to keep cooking because it'll dry out. Does that make sense? You guys like that one? Another idea, um, if the gravy's thick enough or there's not a lot of gravy, sometimes, like I said, the spices or the seasonings will just dilute. So I'll actually add in like some lemon juice or some lime juice. If you guys have been following me, you know I love putting in, they call it acid at the end of cooking. It really brightens all the flavors. So you could put in balsamic vinegar. I do that into like ribs or into pot roast. It's just gonna brighten up the final result. Um, and then definitely season with salt and pepper at the end too. So who has any questions, you guys? I just kind of covered, I think, everything I really wanted to tell you about Instant Pots. Oh, one more thing. They do a great job for dried beans. So for pantry cooking, it's really good for that too. You can do lentils in these in five minutes, dried lentils. You can do uh, chickpeas and black beans. Always Google and look up and look, check the guide that comes with your machine because they'll tell you exactly how much time for each bean. And honestly, with dried beans, it varies based on, believe it or not, how old they are, which is weird. So hi guys, people just joining. It's Julie, what's up? We are doing five minute Instant Pot mac and cheese and I just wrapped up. And I'm doing an Instant Pot giveaway. So if you guys go um, onto my feed, at cookingwjulie, you can sign up, you can let friends know, anyone who wants to win one. So does anyone have any questions about using their Instant Pot or what they do? I'll give you guys a few minutes and see. 
You can just type me a little comment. Who's gonna get one? Who's curious now? When I posted in my story today, I was like, if you're Insta-curious. Uh, to sum it all up, honestly, I don't have a lot of space in my kitchen. I don't like acquiring gear for no reason, but they really do cook things really fast. And if you do have space to store it that's not super inconvenient, oh, hi, Annette. She has to ask a question. I'm gonna come over here and take questions because then I can see you guys better. Don't worry, I'm still here. Hi. All right. Have you made this with a different pasta shape? Um, only small. I've never tried it with like, so the question was, have you made this five minute mac and cheese with another pasta shape? I only did it with small pasta because I wanted to be able to stir it in. I haven't tested it with like a linguine or a spaghetti or a fettuccine or anything like that. Stuffed artichokes, yum. That sounds delicious. I haven't written a recipe for those, but you know what? You could probably just steam them. I think that would work. You could even, let's see, let me find my gear. You could probably just put them on the rack like this. Again, the only challenge would be if you want to brown them on top, you'd have to take them out and put them into the oven. So I'm not, I'm trying to think of how long stuffed artichokes bake for, but I guarantee they would cook a lot quicker in here. Everything does. But using this guy is similar to steaming something. So you could probably put the like chicken broth or lemon and garlic underneath and then set them on here. But then I would probably finish the breadcrumb part. I like stuffed artichokes with crispiness on top. I would finish that part in the oven. Bow ties would totally work. Bow ties, ditalini, the question was, what other shapes of pasta can you cook? So you guys, the, the summary I had about the five minute mac and cheese was, one pound of small pasta, one quart of chicken broth or veggie broth or even just water if you needed to. I did a little bit, I did two tablespoons of butter. You could do two tablespoons of olive oil or cooking oil or whatever, it's just to keep it from sticking while it's cooking. And then I added different seasonings and finished it with cheese. This recipe is also on my website. It's cookingwjulie.com and just search Instant Pot Mac and Cheese. Oh, you're so welcome. Hi. Anyone else have any questions? Seriously, I'm here. I like helping you guys. I had something really fun in mind for Wednesday, but I might have to switch it up. I also would love to hear what you guys would like me to cover in these Quarantine Kitchen episodes. If there's something that you have always been curious about how to make and or something that's really uh, you're craving and you're trying to figure out how to make it with what you happen to have on hand right now, I can help with that too. But thank you guys so much for joining me and definitely let your friends know, check out my feed, sign up to win. I would love it if one of you guys won instead of some random stranger, it'd be really fun. So happy Monday, if there's such a thing. The weather is crazy gloomy here in Hoboken, but it's gonna be sunny out tomorrow. So I hope this was helpful and always, always feel free to DM me at cookingwjulie and just ask me some questions. Do you have a cookbook? I wish I did. I have a free one on my website. It's 10 healthy meals in under 20 minutes. So you guys might really dig that. Uh, there are pantry recipes, no cook recipes, 10 healthy meals under 20 minutes. They're really fast, short ingredient list. So go to my website and sign up. You can get that. That would be cool. But one day I'd love to have my own cookbook. It'd be really fun. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> you guys are the best. Okay. I'm going to say goodbye now because my girls are waiting for dinner, but um, I hope you had a good day and I'll be back on Wednesday at five too. So I'll see you then. Bye.